storm! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> It doesn't look as bad. <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting blown over. There you go. Ah. Ah, look at that. Thunderstorm is starting to rain. It's starting to rain. But look how sort of much calmer at the back here compared to the front. Look at that. Oh, it's just a little. <gasps> Sorry, you need that? Can you hear the thunderstorm, Fernando? <laughs> Look at the dark skies up above. No playing in the garden for you, Missy. These Ioniums, I potted them two days ago and I haven't watered them because my soil was pretty, pretty dry. So you can see all of that. I actually repotted the Medusa. The Medusa came from another pot and there was two of them and then that one is a, one of them is a cutting, I think that one's a cutting and which I just bought and those two already got them growing in two separate pots and so I put them in one pot and now I will water them because I want them to grow because, because the weather is cool. If the weather is cool, we water our Ionium. If the weather is hot, we don't water our Ionium. So in this corner, when I come out of my back door, all I will see are the beautiful, colorful cacti that I have here. I love variegated plants. They make me happy and make me smile. Now, now up the top here is Mardi Gras. Oh my Mardi Gras, you make me happy. It is such a pretty, pretty plant. But I started with one plant about two years ago and then I haven't propagated anything yet. But this year, look at our babies, one, two, three, four, five heads that I could chop off. I'll probably take about a one, two, three from this lot here. Maybe chop off the mother head as well. But I'm not going to do that until uh, maybe next week so because it's almost the end of summer here and you can see even this one now that is tabula porme himimikyo at the back there there's a crested one that was asleep before and now I place it in a cooler area or no direct sunlight and it started growing look at this beautiful thing flowering at the moment oh look it sort of stinks a little bit in here. I don't know whether it's from the sea salt or from this flower because this is only like a mild rating of smelliness. But look at that gorgeous flower. Isn't that cute? Look. Oh, look how dainty that is. Beautiful. It is so beautiful. Also this other one here. This is Huernia cocinea. And the other one was Huernia Volcardia variety ripens, that one. And then this one is Huernia Cocinea hybrid. Smell rating mild. I was sniffing it a while ago and it doesn't have a smell. I can't really smell it. Either my nose is just sort of saturated with or seaweed smell. But anyway, oh look on the other side here, look. Come here. Look at the flower. Isn't that beautiful? I have a smelly one and this flowered a couple of years ago and I was wondering at first where's the smell coming from or actually it's not the smell it was the flies there was all these big blow flies everywhere and I could not work out why all these flies all of a sudden was showing up and I thought summer is already over and then the flies are still here as it turned out it was because of the stapeliads hoernia or whatever you call it anyway I've just realized that I've got some cuttings here that I forgot. This one, I did an arrangement for the mom of a friend of ours. And now these are cuttings I took from then and I forgot about it. That one is already rooting up in the air so I can just stick this in the soil and that should grow. Couple of ruby necklace. And this one, I only, when did I have this did you? I think about only a week ago. Yes. Oh my goodness. This is cubic frost. And one week. And it's ready. Look. Look. There's a little baba. It's a few of them is about to strike. 
And speaking of strike, and look that one, look it's got roots already. But I think that one has already got roots when I starting to root up when I harvested that. So it's very easy to grow succulents. Not, it depends on the succulent, but cubic frost germinates really fast. This super bum here that has been go growing really leggy now. So I, I was, I've been meaning to propagate this or take cuttings and this one now. I hid it over here, look because it was growing out of there and then I accidentally bump it and it's been sitting here for at least a month and so <laughs> and it's already a new baby forming and also another one so this is summer I should have cut this about put my knee I'm sorry my love if I hurt your heart last night there you go it's beautiful so I want to do some arrangement look Farina okay I better get on with it chop 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 this one there you go I finished butchering it and some of the leaves that has fallen off I could just throw it in there and look there's a couple in there can you see it hang on can you see that one there it's hard to see but I'm gonna see that one there see a few of them growing look another one that one leaves babies if I put these two into soil that will just grow but this is not frost hardy it can handle frost up to minus four but you gotta have it or I have it growing in this sort of semi protected area because if I don't she's gonna die this one here there's a lot of leaves in the bottom so I'm just gonna remove that and propagate that they do take a long time to strike a super bum, I find so you gotta be patient with this one but eventually it will strike almost 100% success rate provided you don't get leaves <laughs> like that that's dried up so even this one as long as there's plumpness and ye yellowing on the end sort of 50-50 it might strike it might not so you have to pick ones that are like healthy and young for them to have babies just like people's so unfortunately there's no plant IVF isn't it <laughs> Oh, maybe we should start one. Check out what I'm growing in here. This is my moon cactus that has grown one of these cactus <laughs> stem. This is actually a tropical cactus where they grafted this on. And this one requires a lot of water. So if you can see that one, it's very, very thirsty. But I still have time to, hang on, there you go. Dry that off. And even the top, look. The roots are already looking for somewhere to grow into. So this, if in the wild, this happens to drop down, <laughs> say like that, it will find its way into the soil to embed itself and grow. It's searching out for water. So this one, very thirsty, thirsty cactus. So I might try and grow some of this so I can do some grafting of my uh, cacti later on. So, but for now, I'm going to be chop, chop, chop. They still have actually, see, spikes on the tip, but you can cut that off and it's fine. This is very easy to grow. So it doesn't really matter whether left, right, upside down, this will grow. And <laughs> I'm going to add it on. Oh my goodness, my other cactus here that's growing. This is from my friend Jem that she gave me. And okay, I'm going to add it to that. Anyway, I think that's a San Pedro. Now, I haven't planted it yet, but you can see the tip or the bottom. There's some roots forming in there. There's, they'll be fine. I can still survive another year without being planted. Because this stem is stealing water. Ouch, that's really hard. Ouch. <laughs> that hurts. It's a good thing I got tough skin. Oh my goodness. Look, that's like very stemmy. It's like wood. And this one now, that can grow and fatten up the moon cactus that's growing, the gymnocalyceum that's growing on top of it. There are a lot of echeverias in this view. Contrary to popular belief, well, contrary because I'm going to contradict a lot of notion or ideas that echeveria grows in summer. They grow when the temperature is right. Not too hot. When it reaches the 30s or even high 20s, they close off. 
and when they close off that one is pink fairy or something like that I can't remember exactly what's its name but it's different to this lemon rose and it's different to this rognoni eye and also different to this lola the two lolas that are exposed to the sun over here is also close off now even the agavoides uh, ebony here like it hasn't grown for a while it sort of just stopped uh, suspended animation that's what happens and the rubra this is graptovaria rubra I think it's a graptovaria but it's already a hybrid this one it also stopped growing a lot of the plants this one is sedivaria pink are you pink granite yes it is it also stopped growing although there's some new growth growing in there but it's very very slow so I've already taken some cuttings of this one and I actually planted it somewhere now for at least six weeks when I've taken them and that is six weeks growth it's growing but it's very very slow because we do get a lot of hot days when I say hot days 25 degrees and uh, above and also this one here I just put that there a couple of days ago and therefore got burned right when we had 34 degrees that's when I took it out and it doesn't matter but because this is so easy to grow this is I got a whole lot of yeah peach blossom <laughs> of babies from this one already this is already a baby that I've grown uh, last year or say at least six months ago so even that one there I can't remember what your name is a gold nugget or something that's supposed to be a variegated plant but it also I think said the varia I can't remember exactly there's so many plants oh my goodness my cutie bean got partial burn but it's still okay but they're all asleep and today we had 21 degrees but tomorrow we're gonna get 24 and the following day we're gonna get 28 again that's still okay but slowly a lot of these plants are waking up even this beautiful look at that gorgeous cotyledon look how nice and red in it gorgeous it's just chubby 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 very chubby plant that is just the normal standard one that's not the variegated one and yet it's still so beautiful see look more shaviana on the corner there hiding in the bottom uh, hiding from the sun so it's also like sort of semi close off a lot of them do close this off when it's hot to protect themselves from the heat so even my Lily hello Lily they close off and also when it's hot and you water them guess what happens let's check this out see in the bottom rotting <laughs> they will rot on you but this one I'm not sure if you're light uh, still heavy so that's wet so <laughs> too much water so that's why in summer you're best keeping your echeveria dry even the ones with farina because when they do hang on i can't help myself this one was beautiful before but now i'm not even gonna see what the name is but this was candy la candy or something like that anyway it is la candy now this one now see that was like huge like this when I got it a few months ago that was in spring I think now it's also closed off I was watering this area where I have my curtains sort of protecting them on and off because it depends on the intensity of the sun because sometimes uh, even at 30 degrees there are days that it just seems to be cooler it's possible that it's the UV index is what killing the succulents so anyway I normally as I've said earlier I don't normally water during summer I gorge the plant or give them lots of watering before or like say the second month of summer before the temperature goes above 25 degrees I, I just keep watering them them and then when the temperature goes over 25 then I stop watering and if this one see now here this ones this ones the soil mix that I use is really really dry so I'm using my cat litter soil mix which requires a lot of watering so I thought 
I'll use my cat litter soil mix because we've been getting a lot of rain before but then now during summer we are getting only a little bits of rain so they don't even get wet the top gets wet but then the bottom stays dry so I have to hand water them I can't depend on the rain to just water them so in growing succulents it's also a lot of trial and error and experimenting and part of my experimentation is I intentionally put one of them up here. This one is Pioneer, Cheveria Agaboides Pioneer, that has been burned. But what I did with this one, it was growing nice and green, like that one over there. <laughs> up the top it was growing, so if you can see some empty spots on the top there, it's because I have removed them and put them here. So this Bronze Beauty is the same. I actually protected it and put it here because I wanted to water it because it's got a lot of dry leaves. Now this one did not need watering. It was nice and green and so what I did, I watered it and put it back up there and straight away the next day we got 30 degrees I think it got burned whereas the previous day it was already there with being dry it did not affect it but the next day it got a sunburn because it's contained a lot of water in it so this is another experimentation of lavender pebbles this is supposed to be this is I think ordinary lavender pebble and that one is supposed to be a round form but to me they look the same so I keep buying all these different lavender pebbles so I didn't know how many lavender pebbles I bought I think four already and I also grew uh, a lot from seeds just to see if I can get the round form one the round form one I believe now is because they will become round if you give them lots of water so again what I've learned with this one is just limit the watering but as I found out now they are actually water loving so when they're growing which is not now <laughs> and they're asleep right now don't give them water just let them be and when during autumn when the weather cools down that's when you give them lots and lots of loving lots of watering until to the point where in the bottom leaves were actually burst and that's an indication for you to stop watering that way you can save the top but what you're going to end up with is something really 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 chubby maybe not as chubby as this one but this no name one this was a freebie from greenland gardens that i got so i potted them up and this thing oh my goodness it's just so fat i love it so much even those two there i don't know what they are but i think they might be hang on i was thinking it might be related to this one this blush danko so this blush danko looks very similar to a sedum clavatum now let's compare this is such a beautiful plant oh my goodness i love it look i fell down <laughs> the perils of doing videos my poor plants are suffering anyway <laughs> blush danko Sedum clavatum. I used to love sedum clavatum, but after <laughs> seeing this blush danko in this state, I think, I'm sorry, clavatum, I'm going to be unfaithful. Cover your ears, you're not hearing this. I love this one more, okay? But, I love you more. I love you more. I love you more. Okay, now which one do you love more? Now, I'll return the blush danko to where I had it, because now... I'm going to leave it here for autumn and winter and I want to see if you can survive the winter and still look pretty then you will be my favorite but one of my favorite one the Letitia over here I have to move it out of here so I'll take that off because you're ruining it it's starting to color up now but that's from summer coloring the winter coloring is, oh my goodness, it's just to die for. But anyway, I'm seeing a lot of things. Red hole, what am I gonna do with you? Nothing, I'm just gonna clean you up. Look at the bottom. Look, there's all dry leaves in there. I have to clean it up. Now this one, this is gonna die with the frost as well. This is initial, was that amaniensis? 
hang on this Leticia I'm gonna chuck it with the other Leticia here maybe you can find okay hang on I'll put you with the other Leticia here <laughs> see the Leticia the difference when it's grown in sort of shade that still gets plenty of light but not enough as you can see it's gone really really leggy but this amanuensis can stay here for another two months and the first forecast of frost I'm gonna bring it inside where it doesn't get hit by the frost anyway guys that's all I've got for you and look this one my Puebla uh, Kamanoi Puebla I think is getting attacked by I didn't even see that look aphids the aphid shows up when there's flowers and the seeds there's seeds set there I don't know if it'll have seeds in it but anyway we take that off take that off okay oops now <laughs> no more seeds <laughs> I accidentally removed it but doesn't matter so anyway guys that's all I've got for this video thank you so much for watching and hope I see you in the next video and you too where am I gonna put you so many things to do oh look is the ants trying to go and live on you anyway oh look pinwheel is so beautiful <gasps> that is not a lilacina that's actually one of my monstrous morning beauty oh, it is too my morning are you it's lolita sorry <laughs> see the beauty of labels that's why you gotta put labels